Hello and welcome to week number 31 of the 2024 Baking Challenge. Today, we're making dinner. It's not gonna be sweet. It is definitely a savory bake. And I say bake because there is pastry involved and roasting vegetables and all kinds of things. And it's just so pretty. We are making a savory zucchini galette. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I did consult Google who told me that the American pronunciation is galette, while the English pronunciation is galette. It didn't seem to be that much of a difference to me. Didn't give me the French pronunciation, which is what I'm pretty sure this word is. But that's okay, it's super pretty. It's kind of like a pizza meets pie meets all kinds of delicious vegetables. So grab your ingredients and let's bake. kitchen's a mess and so am I. It is Friday night. I've been gone all day, but I'm determined to get this done. Now the dough does have to sit in the fridge for 30 minutes because we're working with, again, a lot of butter when you're making any kind of pastry crust. There's probably going to be butter involved and we like that to stay nice and cold. Now you could be using pastry flour, a cup and a half or 159 grams, or you can use all purpose flour which is still a cup and a half, but 180 grams. So I guess the all-purpose flour is a little heavier. Let me get my scale on because I am weighing it this time. There we go. As you can see, no KitchenAid stand mixer for me. I am still without. I have not made the drive uh, into the city to take this, to take a to take the mixer in and have it fixed. I, I will, I will, because not having it has been rather inconvenient, but I'm still salty about it. So we are trying to get to 180. I'm almost there. I so want to be precise. There, on the nose, 180, fantastic. All right, you are also gonna add, now this is where you would add a fourth of a cup of cheddar powder if you had that. I don't have that, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I thought about going ahead and getting cheddar powder, but I don't think I have any more recipes planned that call for it. So I'm just gonna skip that part, and I'm gonna go with the half a teaspoon of salt, which you know I'm not gonna measure says to whisk your dry ingredients together. This is incredibly important if you are using the cheddar powder. And then we are cutting in an entire stick of butter. That is eight tablespoons of butter. Now it needs to be cold butter, no room temperature, no melted, cold butter for this. And I'm gonna kinda cut it on the plate here. Boy, this is really cold. <laughs> there we go. This is so much easier with a mixer, but my little hand mixer is not gonna get the job done with this cold butter. So I am just gonna have to do it by hand and I won't make you watch because it is gonna take me a while. Basically, you're gonna cut your butter in and then you're gonna add your cold water, which is five to six tablespoons, I think. Yeah, five to six tablespoons of cold water. So you're gonna, you're gonna crunch your dough in there until it's crumbly. Then you add the water to get that cohesive pastry dough. All right, I'm gonna get started working on this. This is gonna take me a while. I'll see you when it's done. Or you know what, when we add the water. Well, that didn't go as expected. My pastry cutter broke and took a chunk out of my finger. It's fine, it, <laughs> the pastry was safe. And I have another one. Uh, Scott came down with the assist while I cleaned up. And just know that if you've got the rounded metal ones, you're fine. But if you have the sharp metal ones, 
safety check those handles because if they're old enough, those bolts are gonna snap. And uh, when they do, you never know what's gonna happen. So <laughs> safety first, everybody. Okay, this is exactly the consistency that it is supposed to be. Now we are going to add our five to six tablespoons of cold water. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with five, two, three, four, and five. And give that a stir and start mixing all of that cold water in. I don't know that I'm gonna need to add another tablespoon because this is coming together pretty well. Yeah, I'm not going to need to add any more. I almost wonder if I shouldn't add some more flour. Yeah, that's... I am going to add a little bit more flour to mine. Um, mine has been sitting out a little bit longer than I would like for the butter. There we go. Remember, if you're teetering back and forth between a wet dough or a dry dough, just a little bit of flour or water in either direction is gonna correct the problem. So this is still a little on the sticky side. I'm gonna add just a little bit more here. Just a little dusting. Should get it done. There we go. Okay, what we are going to do next is we are going to pat the dough into a disc, wrap it in plastic wrap, and it's going to go into the refrigerator for 30 minutes, and then we'll come back and get the vegetables going. Now we're gonna make the filling. You're gonna to wanna to preheat your oven to 425 degrees and lightly grease or use parchment paper on two baking sheets. Now these are for sheet pan baking. I believe that I got these from Pampered Chef. Don't quote me on that, I might be wrong. You're going to have one large zucchini sliced into one fourth inch pieces and you're going to arrange those in a pan and you're gonna sprinkle that with one and one half teaspoons of your pizza seasoning. I did not use pizza seasoning. I made my own blend. This has garlic and onion, basil, oregano, a little bit of smoked paprika, some salt and pepper. It smells really, really good. In your other pan, you are going to cut your tomatoes, a half a pint of cherry or grape tomatoes. You're gonna to cut those in half. Now these are obviously a little bit bigger than cherry or grape. These are our homegrown cherry tomatoes. Um, I have these in my garden, but these came from Bestie's garden. These are cut in half and sprinkled with the remainder of the seasoning. Uh, so yeah, so another half a teaspoon of the pizza seasoning. These are gonna go into your oven. You're gonna roast them until they're tender um, about 15 to 20 minutes for your zucchini and 10 to 15 minutes for your tomatoes. You're going to take those out of the oven and let them cool down because we're gonna be adding all the cheeses and things to these and you don't want that to get all melty and weird before it goes in the oven. So once these are done, everything should be nice and tender. Stick it with a fork, you'll know. Pull them out, put these uh, sheets on a cooling rack, about 10 minutes, and then I will see you when it's time to uh, start getting our dough all together. <laughs> My veggies are out of the oven, cooling down. I still have four minutes, give or take, on the dough in the fridge. In this bowl, I have got, how much? Three-fourths of a cup of ricotta cheese, a fourth a teaspoon of salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and one large egg, and a little bit of rogue Parmesan cheese because I wasn't paying attention where I was dumping things. Now you can add lemon zest to, the, to this, that's optional, I opted not to. You're gonna get all of this mixed up very, very well. This is going to go inside our galette. So that does not look <laughs> appetizing at all. Um, 
It does smell good though. So that's just super easy. And then you're going to set this aside. All right. That dough should be coming out of the fridge any minute. So I am going to get this set up so that we can roll it out. You're also going to need a baking sheet with some parchment paper on it because we're going to bake this on a baking sheet. It doesn't go in a pie pan or anything fancy like that. Even though it's been in the refrigerator for 30 minutes, my dough is still kind of on the soft side. I maybe left it sit out while I dealt with everything falling apart on me for a little too long. That's okay. I'm going to roll with it. We are, speaking of rolling, getting this to a 12 inch circle. So lightly floured surface and go. <laughs> It's going to be a thicker dough. One of the reasons I love this um, rolling mat is because it has the measurements on it. Although my dough is starting to stick. So we're just going <laughs> to Okay. I think I'm on kind of a time crunch here with trying to get this. And it doesn't have to be perfectly round, you guys. This is gonna be, it's kind of a rustic meal. If you, uh, if you go to King Arthur's website, and um, I will put that link on the blog, it's folded over on the edges. It's, it's rustic, right? Once you get your 12 inch circle, you are going to put that on your baking sheet. Boy, I wish I had a little bit more room here. <laughs> I'm struggling. That's okay. That's what we do sometimes. We struggle and we work through it and that's okay. You know what? I'm just going to pick it up and hope it doesn't rip. Good enough. It's not a circle anymore, but that's okay. I'll take it. I will take it. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, next we're going to spread our ricotta mixture over the dough, leaving a two inch wide bare strip along the perimeter. So, and it says the whole thing. <laughs> so, it doesn't say to only use a little bit, it says the whole thing. Well, I'm just gonna go with it. I swear, between the cheese and the vegetables, it just smells so good in this kitchen right now. I would like to have dinner now. But I'll be patient. It's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be exact. Just good enough is what we're going for here. And that looks good enough to me. All right, what's next? Next, we are going to shingle the zucchini slices over the cheese and scatter the tomato halves on top. All right, I'm just gonna use, I don't know if I should have started on the outside. That's okay, I'm just gonna go for it. My zucchini was not very large, so I was really worried that I would be able to fill it all in. Rightfully so, because this is not <laughs> this is not what I would call shingled very well, but it's gonna have to be good enough. And that is okay. All right, next up we're going to scatter the tomato halves on top. Grab this because this is still hot. So I'm just going to kind of mix them up here. Um, and then, like I said, my tomatoes are, <laughs> they're supposed to be cherry tomatoes, but the garden grew them very large this year. I'm putting a fair amount of tomatoes on because I love tomatoes and these I don't know what the variety is. I honestly have no clue. We've grown a couple different types, um, but these are super good. So that looks good enough to me. 
Oh shoot, we were supposed to sprinkle half of the Parmesan over the cheese. That, that, was, that was my mistake. Um, oops. That is what I get for cooking on an empty stomach because I was in a hurry. So I'm just gonna, I was gonna go nuts with it now because I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Mistakes were made, it's still gonna be tasty, I hope. I mean, can you have too much cheese? Maybe if you're lactose intolerant, I am not. So the answer is no, you cannot have too much cheese. All right, the next step of this is to fold the bare edges of dough into the center. So kind of kind of overlapping on the edge like so. Have a little bit of a a little bit of a See, that's pretty, okay. It looks a little bit like the photo on the professional website from the professional bakers. This is where you are going to grab your egg wash, which is one large egg beaten with a tablespoon of water, and we're gonna brush the edges. Let me go get mine. Okay, get your egg wash everywhere. Don't forget the sides, brush the bottom, or what's exposed if you can. Just kind of slop that on everywhere. It's not gonna hurt anything. And when you're done with your egg wash, you are going to sprinkle some more Parmesan cheese over the entire galette. Oh no, she's using Parmesan cheese from a bag. Oh no, it's the end of the world. It's not. Parmesan cheese, I mean, sure, fresh is better, but who's got the time for that? See, I just sprinkled lightly. Now, this is going to go into the oven for 25 to 30 minutes. The crust is golden brown. The filling is bubbling. I'm putting mine on the center rack. And I'm gonna go for 25 minutes. Okay. Once it comes out of the oven, you are going to allow it to cool for five to 10 minutes. We'll check in and see how it tastes. In the meantime, I'm gonna get this kitchen cleaned up. It's taste test time. This thing came out of the oven looking really pretty and smelling really good. So I'm, I'm excited to give this a try. The crust is really flaky. The, uh, the ricotta cheese, the vegetables are roasted perfectly. This is really good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's savory. I may have added a little bit too much cheese, but overall, this is really, really good, and I will happily, happily make this again. Well, that's it for week 31. I hope that you got to bake along. I hope that your galette turned out amazing. I can imagine this with all kinds of different things. I'm already thinking about some different ideas for a little bit more of a fall flavor. So anyways, I hope you had fun. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button below. I put out one of these videos every single Saturday morning. You can also head over to the Facebook page. Every Wednesday morning, I will release the name of what, will we, what we will be baking and the ingredient list. That way you can get your shopping done ahead of time. And I will give you a little hint. Next week, we are returning to something sweet. So I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.